Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. Then they led him away to crucify him. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots and sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. And Jesus cried out again in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. Good evening, my name is Reverend Terry Swan and I'm the senior pastor here at Salem United Methodist Church and the Connection United Methodist Church. We wanna welcome you tonight to a Good Friday service. Good Friday, we wonder why it's called good when it remembers the time of Jesus' death. Well, it is what God does on the cross that makes it good. It turns that sacrifice into the forgiveness of our sins. Jesus dies on our behalf. And so tonight we're going to read the scriptures of Jesus' last hours and we're going to extinguish the light. And as we do that, we will pray and meditate and we will walk and journey with Jesus through this time. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, graciously behold this your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Luke. Jesus left and made his way to the Mount of Olives, as was his custom, and the disciples followed him. When he arrived, he said to them, pray that you won't give into temptation. He withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down and prayed. He said, Father, if it's your will, take this cup of suffering away from me. However, not my will, but your will must be done. Then a heavenly angel appeared to him and strengthened him. He was in anguish and prayed even more earnestly and sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. And when he arose from his praying, he went out to the disciples and he found them asleep. Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray so that you won't give in to temptation. While Jesus was still speaking, a crowd appeared and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, and Jesus said to him, Judas, would you betray the human one with a kiss? When those around him recognized what was about to happen, they said, Lord, should we fight with swords? One of them struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. And Jesus responded, Stop! No more of this. He touched the slave's ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard and the elders who had come to get him, have you come with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a thief? Day after day I was with you in the temple, but you didn't arrest me, but this is your time when darkness rules. 
After they arrested Jesus, they led him away and brought him to the high priest's house, and Peter followed from a distance. Tonight, we pray that we might not betray you, O God. Forgive us for betraying your love. A second reading from the Gospel of Luke. Then Pilate called together the chief priests and the rulers of the people. He said to them, You brought this man before me as one who was misleading the people. I have questioned him in your presence and found nothing in this man's conduct that provides a legal basis for the charges you have brought against him. Neither did Herod, because Herod returned him to us. He's done nothing that deserves death. Therefore, I'll have him whipped and then let him go. But with one voice they shouted, Away with this man! Release Barabbas to us! Barabbas had been thrown into prison because of a riot that had occurred in the city and for murder. Pilate addressed them again because he wanted to release Jesus. They kept shouting out, Crucify him! Crucify him! For the third time, Pilate said to them, Why? What wrong has he done? I found no legal basis for the death penalty in his case. Therefore, I will have him whipped and then let him go. But they were adamant, shouting their demand that Jesus be crucified, and their voices won out. Pilate issued his decision to grant their request, and he released the one they asked for whom they had been thrown into prison because of a riot and murder, but he handed Jesus over to their will. Holy God, we pray for truth and justice and mercy to prevail in this broken world. third reading from the Gospel of Luke. They also led two criminals to be executed with Jesus. When they arrived at the place called the Skull, they crucified him along with the criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they're doing. They drew lots as a way of dividing up his clothing the people were standing around watching, but the leaders sneered at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he really is the Christ sent from God, the Chosen One. The soldiers also mocked him. They came up to him, offering him sour wine and saying, If you really are the King of the Jews, save yourself. Above his head was a notice of the formal charge against him, and it read, This is the King of the Jews. Holy God, we pray for forgiveness. May we be forgiven for those we have hurt. And may we offer forgiveness just as you did, O Lord. A fourth reading. One of the criminals hanging next to Jesus insulted him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. Responding, the other criminal spoke harshly to him. Don't you fear God seeing that you've also been sentenced to die? We are rightly condemned for we are receiving the appropriate sentence for what we did but this man has done nothing wrong then he said Jesus remember me when you come into your kingdom and Jesus replied I assure you that today you will be with me in paradise holy 
Holy God, remember us when we come into your kingdom. The fifth reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus' mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene stood near the cross. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Holy God, we pray for our parents and for all parents who have shared your love with their children. The sixth reading from the Gospel of Mark. People walking by insulted him, shaking their heads and saying, Ha! So you were going to destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, were you? Save yourself and come down from that cross. In the same way, the chief priests were making fun of him among themselves, together with the legal experts. He saved others they said, but he can't save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down from the cross. Then we'll see and believe. Even those who had been crucified with Jesus insulted him. From noon until three in the afternoon, the whole earth was dark. And at three, Jesus cried out with a loud shout, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? After hearing him, some standing there look, said, look, he's calling Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine and put it on a pole. He offered it to Jesus to drink, saying, let's see if Elijah will come take him down. Holy God, hear our cries. From the Gospel of John. After this, knowing that everything had already completed in order to fulfill the scripture, Jesus said, I am thirsty. And a jar full of sour wine was nearby, so the soldiers soaked a sponge in it and placed it on a hyssop branch and held it up to his lips. When he had received the sour wine, Jesus said, It is finished. O oh Lord, we pray for all those who hunger and thirst. May they be filled. And a final reading. It was now about noon, and the darkness covered the whole earth until about three o'clock, while the sun stopped shining, and the curtain in the sanctuary tore down in the middle, crying out in a loud voice, Jesus said, Father, into your hands I entrust my spirit. And after he said this, he breathed for the last time.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.